Big month for FNAF, huh? It's been about a year and a half since the last real big piece of Five Nights at Freddy's content. Security Breach came out back in December 2021, and that's kind of been it, you know, for a while. You know, that might not sound like ages, but we are talking about the same franchise that released its first four games in like one year. And we've had bits and bobs of FNAF news here and there, and of course, there's the never-ending nightmare that is the books. books. But us Five Nights at Freddy's fans haven't had anything to, you know, really sink our teeth into for quite some time. Sink our teeth into, you know, like a frontal lobe or something. Cut to May of 2023, when the universe decided it was time to absolutely drown us in FNAF news. In the span of maybe two weeks, we got three massive FNAF announcements. On May 16th, we got the first teaser trailer for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Then only three days later, another trailer dropped, giving us our first look at the DLC for Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. You know, and at that point, I, I had already decided I wanted to make this video. Then, out of nowhere, an entirely new FNAF game gets announced with zero warning. So yeah, uh, yeah I wanna talk about them. But first, before we get into all this FNAF stuff, I gotta give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, King Arthur Legends Rise, a new and upcoming RPG for PC and mobile from the people at Kabam, who you might know for their games Marvel Contest of Champions and Disney Mirrorverse. This time they're taking on the classic world of King Arthur and delivering everything you could want in a fantasy RPG. I'm talking strategic turn-based combat, stellar graphics powered by Unreal Engine 5, did dungeons, boss fights, and all that junk wrapped up in a dark, mysterious fantasy world. Embark on a journey to defend Camelot with an ever-growing party of knights, mages, and warriors to aid in your battle against powerful enemies. And of course, this is King Arthur, which means there's weapons. The more you play, the more awesome medieval weaponry you can forge, and the more relics you can use to enhance their abilities. That means they kill monsters better. And yes, you can get probably the most famous sword in history, Excalibur. The sword in the stone. You like that thing from that rock? Claim your throne and slice some heads. Plus there's crossplay, so if you're slicing heads on your PC, you can pick up right where you left off on your phone and play wherever you want. So if all that sounds fun to you, be sure to click the top link in this video's description to pre-register for King Arthur Legends Rise and check out their open beta starting on June 29th. That's so soon. That's, like, that's basically tomorrow. I mean, hey, uh, this video is gonna be on YouTube forever, so maybe it is tomorrow when you're watching this. I don't know you. Again, if you wanna check out King Arthur Legends Rise when it officially drops, just click the top link in the description to pre-register and check out that open beta. Major thanks to King Arthur Legends Rise for sponsoring today's video. And now, on to all the FNAF things that happened over the last month. This is a lot. <laughs> and I wanna start with the latest announcement and then work my way back. So, a few weeks ago, during a big, like, PlayStation Showcase livestream, a teaser trailer was dropped for a brand new FNAF game. Yeah, at first, I thought it was just gonna be another look at the Security Breach deal. DLC, but, uh, wait, no, no, that can't be right. This is the elevator from sister location. That doesn't make sense. I That's right, Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted 2. If you don't know, uh, Help Wanted is probably one of the most important FNAF games to come out in recent years. It was the first game in the series made by Steel Wool, the people behind Security Breach. It was the first game that introduced a lot of the lore we're digging through now. And of course, it was the first game in the series to be made for VR. Vindictive. Racquetball. Virtual reality gave FNAF an entirely new way to make 30 year old men scream and fall to the ground so that I personally can laugh at them. I always thought the idea of turning the first four FNAF games into a VR minigame compilation was just super smart, especially with all the original minigames and secret lore to unlock. So the announcement of a sequel is actually pretty cool and super out of nowhere too. We were all waiting for movie news and security breach DLC. So a completely new game coming out of left field definitely took FNAF fans by surprise. Unfortunately though, there's not too much to dissect with the announcement. As I said, the original Help Wanted mainly focused on FNAF 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the trailer for Help Wanted 2 naturally starts by showing us Five Nights at Freddy's 5, Sister Location. Basically the whole trailer takes place in that main elevator that you start every night of Sister Location in, all while you listen to that same announcer guy be like, Welcome back. We're happy you returned. Glad you could make it for another round. This is a sequel. The elevator crashes, we get jump scared by Ballora, and then that's basically it. This trailer was just like, hey, Help Wanted 2's happening, and it's gonna have sister location. Eh? 
Eh? Yeah, it's not really a lot. It's a cool idea. Sister Location is my favorite FNAF game, so it's cool to see it basically getting a VR remake. But one of Help Wanted's biggest strengths was just the sheer amount of games and content it had to explore across the entire franchise. Leading with Sister Location was definitely a good idea. That game is pretty iconic for FNAF now, and it actually, it was kind of the first FNAF game to have that multiple mini game format, so it'll probably be a good fit. But I'm really hoping this isn't just a Sister Location remake. As cool as that game is, I, I feel like that would be a bit of a step down for Help Wanted. Speaking of a step down, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. That's right, it's everyone's favorite buggy, unfinished horror game where main characters disappear at random, get stuck in walls, and... Yeah. Okay, I'm joking, but yeah, FNAF Security Breach is a weird one. I've actually been thinking about this game a lot recently. It's so weird. The game was objectively broken and poorly designed in a lot of ways. And yet, in a lot of other ways, it kinda sorta saved the Five Nights at Freddy's brand. People absolutely fell in love with Glamrock Freddy, the sun and moon animatronics, and just the general vibes of the Pizzaplex. Making Security Breach one of the most popular moments for FNAF, like, ever. It helps that the game came out right around the time most of the people who grew up with FNAF were starting to get nostalgic. But yeah, uh, Security Breach managed to cause a massive popularity resurgence for FNAF while also being this. Uh, what, 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 what is happening? <laughs> oh my, oh no. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, oh no. This, this is legitimately the worst I've ever seen the game bug out. I kind of don't want to leave. This is fun. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly though, I really like Security Breach. It's broken, it's frustrating, but I had a lot of fun experiencing it all. The glitchiness was actually kind of part of the charm for me. One of my main complaints though, was that the game had basically no story. In fact, it had like less than no story. It had like negative story. It had all these lines of dialogue that implied a story was happening that just never went anywhere. Gregory does mention a bunch of mysterious disappearances happening at the end of the game, and that's the only time we hear about it, and only a little bit before that, Vanny tells Gregory to come to the main stage while he's trying to escape the pizza plex. And if you do, nothing happens at all for a while. It was just such a letdown, man. Clearly they did not have time to put the story in this game. So when the Security Breach DLC Ruin was announced about a year ago, I was so happy. You've got what looks like a new player character, the pizza plex in ruins, uh, Gregory being in some kind of trouble, and a promise that the DLC would be free. It really looked like Ruin had the potential to make up for a lot of the problems Security Breach had. But this isn't a game. This is a drawing. I needed to see some actual gameplay, but I was cautiously optimistic. Luckily, last month we got our very first trailer for the DLC, and I wanna say things are looking promising. The trailer starts with Cassie, our new main character, hopping into the pizza plex through a hole in the front entrance, which has been like all boarded up. Definitely placing this a ways after the events of the main game. So the pizza plex is absolutely wrecked. There's even a bunch of graffiti everywhere. That I, I like to believe that this was the animatronics vandalizing the place. Like cheap and Roxy running around writing insulting messages to Freddy or something. Freddy is a... You kiss your mother with that mouth? Well, sometimes, but not recently. Uh... Where was I? Oh, yeah, uh, you play as Cassie in a super rundown pizza plex, probably sometime after the events of the Afton ending from the main game, and we're trying to find and help Gregory. Little dude talks to us through some very marketable walkie talkies as we delve into the pizza plex once again, avoiding Roxy, Chica, and Monty, who have, uh seen better days. Most of them just straight up don't have faces anymore. Plus, we got more of those dang endoskeletons that only move when you're not looking at them. Remember those guys? They certainly weren't the most frustrating part of the entire game. Glad they're back. From the looks of things, Ruin is very clearly going for a much heavier focus on the horror. And if this bit is anything to go by, maybe even implementing some more classic FNAF concepts. It looks like there's gonna be security camera stations to check on, with multiple different camera angles to sift through. There were bits like that in the main game, with the Faz watch, but not only does Cassie not seem to have one of those, I actually, I don't think we see Freddy like at all in the entire trailer. I don't think our good boy Freddy shows up once. At least, I don't think he did. Is that him? I assume that was Monty, but I, 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 don't, I don't even know if Monty has skin anymore. Uh, 
I don't know, it's weird. But the most interesting bit happens right at the end. When someone the player is controlling, I don't actually know who, puts on a bunny mask, which turns everything a glitchy reddish purple. And then we get this trippy shot of some kind of Blink-182 rabbit. That has to be Vanny. I know Cassie's our player character now, but it, it wouldn't make sense for Cassie to be putting on the Vanny mask, would it? Anyway, cut to the logo and then boom, July, 2023. This junk is coming out soon. And you know what that means? We're going back. I'm really stoked to get back into this game and see what Steel Wool has cooking. Looking at the trailer, I'm really hoping they use this time skip and new characters perspective to fill us in on the story that was, you know, supposed to be in the first game, especially when it comes to Vanny. I mean, she was supposed to be the main villain of the entire game, only for her to basically do nothing after what, the first hour? I'm hoping this scene at the end with the Blink-182 rabbit means we're gonna get a lot more focus on Vanny. And who knows, maybe we could get to play the game from her perspective a bit? I don't know, but I'm excited, though still a little cautious. I mean, let's be real. How many things in the original game's trailer never showed up in the final product? Yeah, exactly. So I'm still keeping my eye on this one, but I'm excited to play it either way. So let's move on to the weirdest and most exciting news, the FNAF movie. I'm genuinely surprised this is even happening, because this thing has been in the works since 2015. That's eight years, dude. Eight years. I think it was originally getting made by Warner Brothers, but then got dropped and picked up by Blumhouse. And I remember reading that they just couldn't figure out a storyline that worked. So when we hit the turn of the decade and there was still no movie, yeah. I'll be honest, I kind of thought it had just been quietly canceled or something. But finally, over the last couple of years, news started to circulate again, culminating in this teaser trailer. So let's take a look, and then we'll all go away. Oh man, the graphics in this are crazy. So the trailer starts with an old ad for Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and, <gasps> it's them, they're real. Oh my god, they they nailed it. These animatronics were made by Jim Henson's Creature Shop and they are dead on. Though if I were to nitpick, I'd maybe say they look a little too clean. Like for decades old abandoned animatronics, they, they don't look too grungy. But besides that, they're great. I, I love them. Also, a uh, little side note, you see this scene? Yeah, in the actual trailer, the band is performing a real song from the 80s. It's Talking In Your Sleep by The Romantics. A copyrighted song in a trailer that they sent to YouTubers to react to. That's just mean. Anyway, moving on, we see a few snippets of our main character, Mike Schmidt, exploring the pizzeria at night and getting caught in some kind of James Bond murder trap, fun. We see kids lost in the pizzeria, hiding from the animatronics, and we see just one tiny little glimpse of William Afton, played by Shaggy himself, Matthew Lillard. And let me tell you, I wasn't super convinced by the idea of a FNAF movie at the start, but this trailer has pretty much sold me on the aesthetics alone. Everything looks exactly like you'd want it to. Even little details, like those checkerboard lines on the walls and the security office. Look at this. The camera angles on the screens, the fan, the poster, even the cup of soda are all on point, which is why the one major issue everyone has had stood out so much those eyes. All the animatronics in the trailer and on the poster have these bright orangish red eyes. That, th that, that's never been a thing before. Usually they have those like tiny little silver eyes or something. We don't really know why they got tomato eyes, but if that's the only thing people could find to complain about, then I'd say the trailer did a pretty good job. Yeah, I am genuinely excited for the FNAF movie now. I mean, sure, we still don't know the story yet, or if the writing's gonna be any good, or if the characters will work, or literally anything besides what the movie looks like, but hey, it's not like FNAF fans are used to prestige dramatic writing in this franchise. We spend the majority of our time trying to piece together the story ourselves because we're getting basically nothing from the games. And if Security Breach taught me anything, it's that if you can nail the vibe, FNAF fans can forgive a lot. And I mean a lot. <laughs> 